Hold on tight because a mind-blowing incident in Israel is shaking up religious beliefs worldwide. But wait, there's more. Inside the borders of Israel, the Jewish people are making a surprising move to reclaim their birthright and bring back their historic place of worship. Experts think it's not going to be easy, especially with the ongoing war and Israeli reforms. How are the Jews planning to pull off this incredible task? And will the Muslim community allow it to happen? It's time to dive into this video today and uncover the jaw-dropping details of this remarkable journey. In just a few quick weeks, people around the world have started thinking differently about Israel. Why? Well, Israel decided to fight back after facing attacks on its people. The events on October 7, 2023, are still fresh in the minds of regular Israeli folks. Sadly, they lost loved ones in the hands of Islamic extremists. For more than a month, there's been a big question about how much retaliation is okay. It's a tricky moral problem. But one thing is clear. Israel would face even more violent attacks if the other side had powerful military weapons too. But in the middle of all this, something surprising happened within Israel's borders. This unexpected development caught the attention of the Jewish community. It's something uplifting and inspiring. What's this strange event? How did it lead to rebuilding the Third Temple? And why are different groups against making it happen? To get the full picture of what just went down in Israel and surprise people of all religions, we need to dive into the history of Israel. Officially known as the State of Israel, it's a fascinating country in the Middle East. It's surrounded by Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, and Egypt, and there's the Mediterranean Sea on the west, the rich history of Israel. The story of Israel goes way back. According to the Old Testament, a man named Abram, at 75 years old, listened to God's call. He left his home and traveled to the land of Canaan with his wife Sarai and nephew Lot. After a tough journey, they reached the promised land, Canaan. They were told this place was meant for them and their descendants. This is where it all began. But even before Abram and his group arrived in Canaan, it was already home to various tribes like the Hittites, Amorites, and more. These tribes are mentioned a lot in the Old Testament. Canaan was a place with different tribes, each having their own cultures, languages, and ways of making a living, mostly through farming and trade. They believed in many gods, showing their colorful beliefs. The exact time when Abram got to Canaan isn't written down in the Bible, but people generally think it happened around the early 2nd millennium BCE. Abram's relationship with the Canaanites was complex. Sometimes they were friendly and welcomed him and his family. Other times they were unfriendly and caused trouble. Still, despite all the difficulties, Abram and his family managed to make a place for themselves in Canaan. The Importance of Israel's Land The land of Israel holds huge importance in history, culture, and religion, especially for three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Over many years, this place has seen so much— from different empires like the Assyrians and Babylonians to various cultures like the ancient Israelites and Canaanites. Each of these groups left a lasting impact on this land. It's been like a cradle for civilizations, witnessing the rise and fall of many cultures and traditions. Also, around 1000 BC, the Israelite tribes joined together under King Saul. Later, King David took over after Saul during the United Monarchy period. He made Jerusalem the capital, and King Solomon built the first temple on the Temple Mount. This temple became a special place for worship, showing the promise between God and the Jewish people. After Solomon, the kingdom split into the northern and southern regions. The Assyrians captured the northern kingdom of Israel in 722 BC, and many had to leave. Then, the Babylonians conquered the southern kingdom of Judah in 586 BC, destroying the first temple and sending many Judeans into exile. When the Persians defeated the Babylonians, Cyrus the Great allowed Jewish exiles to return and rebuild their temple. The second temple period began, and a new temple was constructed in Jerusalem. Around the first century CE, Christianity started in the region with Jesus of Nazareth as a key figure. Sadly, in 70 CE, 
the Romans destroyed the Second Temple during the Jewish-Roman War. The historical events of ancient Israel, combined with religious texts and archaeological evidence, have greatly influenced the Jewish people's cultural, religious, and historical identity. This impact stretches far beyond, shaping the world at large. In the 1920s and 1930s, many Jews moved to Palestine, seeking refuge from anti-Semitism and persecution in Europe. This wave of Jewish immigration, known as Aliyah, changed the demographic landscape. Jews bought land from Arab landowners and established kibbutzim and moshevim agricultural settlements. These settlements aimed to create self-sufficient Jewish communities, contributing to the development of Jewish infrastructure and institutions. However, the growing number of Jewish immigrants and settlements worried the Arab population. Arab leaders and communities feared losing their land, political rights, and national identity. They saw Jewish immigration as a threat to their culture and aspirations for self-determination. This fear led to violent clashes between Jewish and Arab communities. The tensions were fueled by the conflicting goals of both groups in the region, the rebirth of Israel and Declaration of Independence. On May 14, 1948, David Ben-Gurion, the leader of the Jewish Agency and future Prime Minister of Israel, made a big announcement. He proclaimed the Israeli Declaration of Independence, officially creating the State of Israel. Ben-Gurion stressed the deep connection between the Jewish people and the land of Palestine, highlighting the need for a homeland where Jews could live freely and securely. The Declaration acknowledged the hardships Jews faced, especially during the Holocaust, making a Jewish state a compelling necessity. It expressed gratitude for international support, referencing a United Nations resolution from November 29, 1947. Now let's journey back to the ancient world, around the 4th millennium BC. Picture yourself in the arid landscapes of the Middle East, discovering the earliest traces of Jerusalem. Its ancient name, Rusalim, echoes through Egyptian texts from the 19th century BC. Throughout the ages, Jerusalem saw different powers, Canaanites, Jebusites, and Israelites, leaving their mark. Around 1000 BCE, King David played a crucial role. With determination and strategy, he captured Jerusalem from the Jebusites, making it the capital of the United Kingdom of Israel. Under King Solomon's rule, Jerusalem flourished with majestic structures, especially the First Temple, a testament to the city's spiritual and political importance. Jerusalem became the heartbeat of Jewish life, a center of worship, and a symbol of national identity. Its significance isn't just for Judaism, but also for Christianity and Islam, making it a profoundly religious city for all three faiths. Its historical and spiritual importance is deeply rooted in the beliefs and traditions associated with each religion. For Judaism, Jerusalem is the holiest city, closely tied to the history and religious identity of the Jewish people. In Jewish tradition, it's believed to be where God chose to show His presence on earth. The city holds the Western Wall, also known as the Wailing Wall, a remnant of the ancient Jewish temple destroyed by the Romans. This revered wall is where Jews gather to pray, expressing their deep connection to God and their ancestral heritage, temple mount, and religious significance. Moreover, the temple mount in Jerusalem is super special. It's believed to be where the first and second Jewish temples stood, making it a sacred place for worship and pilgrimage. In Christianity, Jerusalem is also a big deal. It's linked to the life, crucifixion, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre in the city's old part is thought to be where Jesus was crucified, buried, and came back to life. It's a major Christian pilgrimage spot, drawing millions of believers. The Via Dolorosa, a path in the old city, is believed to be the route Jesus took carrying the cross. The Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem, is where Christians think Jesus ascended to heaven. Islam sees Jerusalem as the third holiest city, following Mecca and Medina. It's super important because the Prophet Muhammad is believed to have traveled from Mecca to Jerusalem during the night journey, Isra and Miraj. He ascended to heaven from the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount. This mosque is the third holiest site in Islam, 
seen as a place for prayer and spiritual moments. The Dome of the Rock, also on the Temple Mount, is a significant Islamic shrine with a golden dome symbolizing Jerusalem. It's crucial in Islam, not just architecturally, but also spiritually. The connection of these three religions to Jerusalem is more than just rituals. It's influenced the whole region's history and politics. The city has been a central point for religious devotion, conflicts, and dreams of sovereignty. It's been a bit tricky because of its rich history with overlapping religious and historical claims. Tensions and disagreements among different religious and political groups have been common, given the complex nature of Jerusalem. Jerusalem's Rich History Throughout the ages, Jerusalem has been a witness to the ebb and flow of numerous empires and civilizations, each leaving its mark on the city. From the ancient Israelites and Canaanites to the Romans, Byzantines, Arabs, Crusaders, Ottomans, and more, Jerusalem has been a highly sought-after prize for conquerors and a hub of religious and cultural exchange. In the present day, Jerusalem stands as a city divided along religious and political lines. With its holy sites and narrow streets, the old city is a mosaic of different faiths coexisting in a confined space. This complexity is heightened by the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, with both sides claiming Jerusalem as their capital and seeking sovereignty over the city. The Challenge of a New Temple Amidst this historical and geopolitical backdrop, the idea of constructing a new temple in Israel has gained attention. This venture, particularly the construction of the Third Temple, faces a multitude of challenges, practical and ideological. At the heart of the endeavor lies the historical and religious significance of the intended site, the Temple Mount, known as Haram al-Sharif in the Islamic tradition. This sacred ground is home to the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, revered sites in Islam. The significance of this location makes it one of the most contentious religious spots globally. Selecting the site for the new temple is a critical step. Factors such as accessibility, symbolism, and the surrounding environment must be carefully considered. The chosen location should ideally inspire reverence and tranquility, fostering a spiritual connection between devotees and the divine. Once a suitable location is identified, obtaining the necessary permits and approvals becomes another formidable challenge. Like any construction project, Temples are subject to various zoning and regulatory requirements. Navigating through this bureaucratic maze can be a time-consuming and complex process. Navigating legal requirements and design. The project team must closely work with local authorities to kick off the temple construction. We need to follow all the rules and get the green light from the officials. This involves meeting legal obligations and getting clearances to make sure everything is on the right track. Designing the temple is like creating a work of art. The architecture of the temple reflects the beliefs of the community it serves. The architect says it's a balancing act. We have to blend tradition with innovation. Careful thought and talks with religious leaders and architects help capture the essence of faith while making sure the temple meets practical needs. It should have enough space for rituals, meditation, and gatherings, all while looking beautiful to inspire devotion. One big challenge is finding the money to build the temple. Temples run on donations, and raising enough capital is a tough job. The project team has to reach out to individuals, businesses, and organizations for support. It's like convincing people to invest in a good cause. Effective communication and persuasion are key to getting generous contributions. Skilled hands and traditional techniques. The construction phase itself comes with a bunch of challenges. Temples are often complex structures with detailed carvings and fancy decorations. The project team needs skilled craftsmen for this, and finding these skilled hands, coordinating with contractors, and ensuring they have the right experience are all part of the challenge. Traditional construction techniques and materials can also be a hurdle. We're talking about ancient methods. Many temples stick to old building practices which can be tricky in today's construction world. Sourcing specific materials, like special stones or wood, can be time-consuming and logistically complex. It's like a treasure hunt. Above all, the temple needs to last. 
The architect says that these buildings are meant to stand for a really long time. Ensuring the structure is strong and durable is a top priority as it's like building more than just a structure. It's a symbol of faith and culture. The challenges are many, but the goal is clear, to create a lasting place of worship. And to make sure the temple stands strong for a long time, it requires engineering considerations. We have to think about the environment. The temple must endure things like earthquakes, harsh weather, and normal wear and tear. We work closely with engineers and architects to make sure the design is tough and safe. Sanhedrin's initiatives. The Sanhedrin, an important group, is trying to help with the temple's reconstruction. They're growing farms and forests to recreate the old conditions. Plants are crucial for temple rituals. But not everyone agrees on how much authority the Sanhedrin should have, and some worry about the impact on the environment. Special priests called Kohanim, tracing their family back to Moses' brother Aaron, are getting ready for the temple. Even though they can't do all their usual duties without the temple, they're still respected in Jewish communities. One tricky thing is making a special red cow's ashes used in ceremonies. Since these cows are extinct, the Sanhedrin is working on breeding a pure red cow using red Angus as a base. These cows are kept in secret until they're old enough for ceremonies. The whole world is watching this story unfold. The status of Jerusalem and the Temple Mount is a big deal in international talks. It's a big puzzle. Many agreements, like the Oslo Accords, tried to figure out what to do with Jerusalem. Building a new temple is a big deal and could affect relationships between countries. Israel's connections with its Arab neighbors need to be considered especially. Impact of recent events on temple construction. Recently, a lot has been happening in the Middle East. After an attack by Hamas in 2023, things got really tough, as there's been a month-long war and a lot of people have lost their lives. It's making everything more complicated, and the conflict might impact the temple project and even worsen tensions and violence in the region. Due to this conflict, the hospitals are also affected. The international community condemns the violence, calling for a ceasefire. This turn of events profoundly affects potential agreements for the Third Temple. The conflict not only causes human suffering, but also strains diplomatic relations and deepens divisions among religious and ethnic groups. Trust and understanding are hard to find, making it challenging to agree on sensitive matters like constructing religious structures. To overcome these challenges, addressing the conflict's root causes is crucial. We need lasting peace. Rebuilding the Third Temple requires delicate negotiations, trust building, and a sincere commitment to reconciliation from all parties involved. Understanding temple construction in current times. The Jewish people hold a strong belief in the historical and religious significance of the Third Temple. Rooted in prophecies from over two millennia ago, like Daniel 9.24.27 and Daniel 12.11.12, 12, these predictions spark diverse interpretations. The 70-week prophecy in Daniel 9, 24, 27 is of particular interest, which some see as a timeline predicting events related to the Third Temple. It's all about understanding ancient words in today's context, and the current situation remains uncertain, impacted by both recent conflicts and interpretations of ancient prophecies. Moreover, the prophecies in Daniel like Daniel 9.26 and Daniel 12.11-12, to 12, spark debates among Jews. It's like trying to solve a mystery, explains the scholar. In verse 26, some see a mention of the Messiah, while Daniel 12.11-12 12, 12, introduces the concept of the abomination of desolation and 1,190 days. Some connect these verses to the Temple Mount and the future Third Temple, where the abomination could be a disrespectful act. Different groups and scholars interpret these prophecies in various ways. It's like reading the same story with different eyes, says the scholar. Interpretations often clash in religious and political debates, especially regarding the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. International mediators like the United States play a key role in Israeli-Palestinian discussions. The U.S. has a history of brokering agreements, such as the Oslo Accords, addressing issues like the Temple Mount. 
Neighboring countries like Jordan, linked to the Temple Mount's history, also contribute. Egypt, using its diplomatic influence, actively participates in mediating efforts. Reconciliation Methods Various methods have been proposed for reconciling the challenges of the Third Temple. One idea suggests a shared religious space, drawing inspiration from historical examples like Istanbul's Hagia Sophia, serving both Christians and Muslims. This approach aims for coexistence and mutual respect within a shared space for diverse religious traditions. Interfaith dialogue emerges as a powerful tool for reconciliation. Bringing together religious leaders, scholars, and communities from different faiths fosters understanding and empathy. It's like sitting down for a friendly chat, says the advocate. Such dialogues create platforms for open discussions, discovering commonalities amidst differences. In the ongoing conflict between Israel and Palestine, urgent dialogue is needed, especially for sensitive matters like the Third Temple. It's like trying to find peace in a storm, reflects the mediator. Achieving reconciliation requires balancing religious, political, and diplomatic considerations with a strong commitment to peaceful coexistence. The need for dialogue is crucial and your support matters. Clicking the Super Thanks button below isn't just a donation. It's a blessing that helps share the transformative journey of Jesus. Your support is like a helping hand in our mission, expresses the advocate. So what do you think of the recent incidents of Israel challenging religious belief worldwide? Comment below and subscribe for more.